We're going to do an Amiga games demonstration if you want to see some current Amiga games. Put the MOS logo on the screen. Go back over here and uh, start the recording. So I'm recording this. Hopefully the machine doesn't crash too much during this particular uh, process. Make sure my levels are good here on uh, the audio feed for those who are out there watching and listening. Testing one, two, three. Yep, okay. That's good. That's good over there. Okay. So, um, just wanted to show off a couple of games that have come out in the last year. Uh, not too many today. I don't want to take too much time. But the idea is this is the lighter side of the Amiga. Um, I... Um, Check the uh, OS4 Depot, and there's uh, other sites for other platforms where you can find uh, games to download and check out. Um, got a couple of toys up here, one of which is the uh, Competition Pro joystick, which has a switch on the back that does something, I don't know what that does. Uh, and then I also have something I got off of eBay. It's the original Amiga joystick made by uh, Hytoro um, back in the day. And uh, it's, of course, a classic joystick, so it uses the Atari connector or Amiga connector. And then I have a little USB box that converts the classic joystick into a USB device uh, running on my Amiga 1 XE. That's what Mute's for. Okay, um, so I got a couple of different games here today. Uh, uh, what's really cool is that several of these games are actually commercial games that you actually have to pay for, which is fantastic. Um, I'm going to start with a free game uh, it's called Free Civ. Uh, it should be known to uh, many, many people. It's an old school game. Um, the reason why I wanted to highlight this is because it's uh, been recently re-released um, and updated. Let me get this uh, on the screen. And you can obviously play at the screen settings to get it, uh, to get it all right. But uh, it is, the graphics are greatly updated from what it had been uh, in the past. And it looks like I have a problem. I need to uh, get the, um, the interface working. Sorry, let me make it a little smaller. So you obviously have a lot of uh, different things you can do here. That's the one we want. Check. So the performance is pretty good, but the, title, the tile set has been uh, updated as well. So we're going to close options, and we're going to uh, join a game. Actually, no, I take that back. Let's see if the server's running. So it's an online game. The idea is that you can uh, contact your friends, start a server, and they can connect in so you can play together. It's a civilization clone. Um, so you start off just like civilization with a uh, number of units. Uh, located here in your starting territory. It uh, looks like we got some wine in a, in a hut. Um, down at the bottom is a little mini map, uh, bottom left hand corner here. And on the right, it gives you uh, what your status is. This is the explore unit. And then you have a bunch of other options. So, one of the things is the research tab. Uh, we uh, have not started researching uh, ceremonial, oh, sorry. Um, ceremonial burial is our first research. And, and if you're not familiar with civilization, you start off with a primitive culture. And you grow and grow and grow and grow, and you turn into uh, a world-dominating force where you're battling other nations. Or so, die. what's that? Or die. Or die. So I'm just going to use the uh, mouse button, and down here you'll see it says moves two of three. It's a very simple game to play. So I'm just going to have my little uh, explorers just go explore. Now we have our workers, and workers can do different tasks. Um, I'm just going to have these guys move for now. And then I have the uh, folks over there. So it's asking us for... Uh, we found a ceremonial burial in an ancient uh, scrolls of wisdom. So we can do uh, like alphabet. So now we're researching the alphabet. And we can also do researching of, uh, let's see, the Bronze Age. So it tells us what we get for doing that. And it does it in an iconographic form, which is nice. So we're going to close that dialogue. And then we'll move this guy up. And now we're out of turns. It's a turn-based strategy game, so that when the other, you're done your turns, the other player does their turns, and you can interact and fight with each other. You hit shift enter, and it's the next day. And then you see messages at the top. So I'm just gonna keep moving my little guy around here, sort of explore a bit. And I think the settlers, if I click 
on them, we can build a city. And we're building Montevideo. And so uh, it talks about the various improvements. It's a very in-depth, uh, detailed game, uh, the way it's designed. And so now we just created a city. And you grow your resources, you conquer territory. But again, I wanted to uh, highlight this because it's a game that's been recently updated. It's been around for a very long time. Uh, I used to play it when the tile set was nowhere near as pretty, which I like about it, the fact that they've gone to the isometric view and everything. Uh, so it's a great game. There's a local Amiga server, so you can actually run the server from your Amiga, have your friends come over, or have them connect to the internet. Great way to spend 15, 16 hours of your day uh, playing a video game. So um, that's uh, the first one I want to show. It's just free sieve. So I'm going to close that, and I have a directory here. Um, which is the, uh, my, my uh, directory of games. Uh, next, I wanted to show a game that is a port. Um, it's called Gems. It's, again, a fun little time waster. Uh, it's, a, it's an interesting game. It took me a little while to sort of figure out how you actually play this thing, because it's a little non, uh, uh, sort of nonlinear. Uh, the graphics are very nice. This is a 800 megahertz Amiga 1 XE. I'm sure on the... Uh, uh, X1000, this game would be a lot snappier. So it took me a long time to figure out, but this guy in the middle is the key, and you want to do uh, based on colors. So if I shoot this red brick and then this red brick, they'll cancel each other out. I can't shoot the bricks that don't have a landing zone. So I can do green and green, and I can do red and I can do red. And now I'm canceling them out, but if I do yellow, green and yellow, they'll build on each other. So the idea is to try to um, shoot the colors so that they link up. Like those two don't link up there. So I can do blue, but I took it out so my blue was gone. Uh, let's see, those are red, I can't do that. But I can do red here, it's gonna kill that. I can do that green, and now all I left is this yellow. So if I do the blue, it gave me another blue and I get a yellow. And I completed, I've never done that before, that's great. So you have to kill that block in the middle. And if you get, if you, if. If you're not careful and you just start adding stuff up and just start clicking the button, what happens is you can completely sort of fill up the, uh, the space, as you can see here, and you get a situation where it's much more difficult to actually clear the level in the game. It's a fun game. It actually does require some thinking in multi-dimensions because the blocks come from different sides and you don't know what colors they're going to change into. Um, so I, I did find it uh, quite enjoyable when I was... Uh, checking it out for this uh, presentation. Um, so this one's called Gems. It's on OS4 Depot. Yeah, Trevor. It's free. This is a free game. Yeah. Free Civ is also free. Uh, hence the free part. <laughs> no, but uh, Free Civ is actually one of those games that's been around for at least 12 years. And it's a very well supported community game. I wouldn't say that it's updating very quickly, but the fact that we do get new versions, and I apologize, I don't know the author um, the latest author of it off the top of my head here. Um, but it's definitely up on OS4 Depot. And we appreciate the work that you do to keep this uh, game uh, ported and up to date. Um, next I'm going to show Age of Thieves. This is based on, uh, I believe, uh, Carcerone? It's based on a card game. I'm trying to remember which exact one. There's so many out there. What's it? Carcassonne. Carcassonne. I think it's based on Carcassonne, where you, you uh, lay down different. Um, uh, you lay down different uh, tiles. Let's get into the game here. And this is this is a um, Amiga original. It's a it's new new construction, if you will. It's a new uh, application. It's designed to be a very simple card game, where you start off with this card, and I can zoom out on the mouse wheel so we can see more of this display. And at the top, I have a pick tile button. So notice there's a tile count, 70 tiles, so that's the end of the game. I can right click and I can rotate this tile and notice the colors change there. I put the tile down and then I pick a, a meeple and meeples are how you get points. So I'm gonna put a, a, a merson on the uh, tile here. And now this is the computer player and you can have more than two players as well. So I'm gonna pick the tile and I can do it here. Um, actually I can't do it there. Uh, I can't play it on that square, but I can play it, say, here. Uh, or I can actually play it there. Let's do that. 
So notice that some of the tiles have the Boeing square. Those are extra points. So the uh, person is clearly uh, interested in supporting the Amiga system. So now the computer player is putting a uh, temple type construct. Um, so I will do another tile here. Aha. And then we'll put a meeple down. I'm not quite sure what the meeples are for. Is that part of uh, Carcassonne? Car 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 I'm more of a Settlers type guy personally, but that would be awesome to have a really solid Settlers of Catan port. Maybe I'll put that on the list. But it's a nice little game. Um, it's, uh, it's been around for a little bit. Um, the author released it uh, earlier this year. Oh, I just kicked out as Mersin. Awesome. Although his score is four and mine's zero. That's not so good. I gotta figure out how the scoring works. Um, but it's written in, I think, uh, Portable E. It's a nice little game. It, it plays very nicely. Uh, done by Mr. Derek. So if you're looking for a game to download, I recommend downloading uh, that one to, to kick it off. Next, I'm gonna kick in Blob Wars. Uh, let's see. No uh, metal key found, online functions disabled. So the blobs were happy race, they wanted nothing, running for nothing, and then something happened to them, and one of them tied a rainbow uh, thing around his head. Let me check options, see if I can get the ghost here. Full screen off, joysticks. I don't know which joystick is uh, active. I play it on easy, so I look like I know what I'm doing. Let's see, so this little thing pops up. That's that. Uh, you can choose these different areas, and you do start. So I have the Competition Pro joystick. Let's see if it's working. No. Uh-oh. I have no fire button on the joystick. I don't have a jetpack either. Ah. So basically, these are uh, highly armed, dangerous um, uh, blobs here. There we go. And they explode, and they come close from there bloody gory goodness and you can get different types of shots and bombs apparently I'm on the grenade mode presently don't mess with me you get a grenade to the face but there's a little pitfalls and traps like that water there around, go down. Somehow there's a way to change your gun. There we go. Now I have a cannon. So if you want some mindless killing fun, you can uh, Die already, please. So it's not quite certain as game show, but it's uh, it can be fun. Uh oh, I died in the acid. That's enough metal blobs, uh, blob wars. Um, so that was a high powered one. Next, I'm going to show. Uh, I anyone know how to pronounce this? Coincin? So this is actually a commercial game. It's available for the Amiga and for Windows. Um, this game is pretty evil in its design, so I'm going to do a new game here. And the way it works is pretty fascinating. At the bottom, you'll notice I've got a little guy that's moving back and forth. And you'll notice that he has a color. I can change the color that is current. And then I press the C key to shoot. 
and you'll notice that that yellow one is falling down and I can't shoot it. I have to change it to yellow before I can shoot it. So not only do you have to aim, uh, line things up, you also have to choose the right color. And so you can see that as the uh, pieces start falling, and it's actually kind of hard to see on the screen, I apologize for that. As the pieces start falling, you have to get pretty uh, good at switching colors and shooting as well. And all sorts of interesting happens. You'll notice that guy just set off his ping pong weapon. That one just exploded and took out a bunch of others. So they have different effects when they blow up. And then at some point when the uh, things change, the base will, will uh, alter as well. So it's a very uh, intense game. It takes uh, a little bit of practice and the difficulty accelerates quite rapidly. Um, it's a it's a pretty cool uh, it's a pretty innovative game and I'm glad that they released it for Amiga OS 4 and for Windows at the same time, uh, which is uh, something that we should all uh, support. So we got past the first level here. Um, Huinsen or something here. I'll show you the name. Uh, H U E N I S O N. And the graphics are very stylized. They, they spent a lot of time sort of coming up with this sort of dot structure to make it look retro. But it's very, it's a new game with some interesting uh, pieces of, uh, of design. So, uh, and the main logo is that little angry face. And uh, if you look at their icon here, what's that? It does, but it's a new game with new functionality. And I think it does, as you get deeper into it, some pretty wacky stuff. So. Uh, the manual is a PDF, and, and from attention to detail, the manual actually has the same sort of look as the game. <laughs> so they, they uh, really did a great job on this one. It's exciting to see. It is a commercial title. Uh, you can actually pay for it, which is great. Um, now I'm going to show this, uh, this guy called Airstrike. This one I downloaded probably a few months ago just to try it out, like to check out the new games. Um, it's infuriating at first because you can't figure out what the keys are to play. Um, so what you do is you hit escape and you do player setup and I like being the red guy so I'm going to turn the uh, other guy to the blue guy <coughs> and uh, first thing is fire so we're going to make that the space bar next thing is turn counterclockwise so that's the left arrow key right arrow key up to accelerate and alt for the bomb so now I can actually play because it's, a it's designed for two players on the keyboard so your hands get a little cramped and uh, so we'll go back, and it's the first person to five is the, is the winner. So I'm, I'm the little red guy, so I'm going to shoot at the blue one and try to kill him. And the best way to kill him, by, by bar none, is uh, hitting him with a bomb. And I also want to blow up the blimp, because that's kind of fun. So I'm trying to get him in a position where I can bomb him. And I don't want to bomb myself, because if I hit myself with a bomb like this, I, uh, it kills you as well. So it's first person to five. Oh, I just blew myself up. And there's clouds and all sorts of fun stuff to play with. Oh! Oh, he's, 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 he's getting my, he's kicking my butt this time. And there's some random cannon around shooting at me, which is always fun. Got him. I find that the, the easiest way to kill the guy is with the bomb. Let me, uh, let me also say that this game is a lot harder than it looks. <laughs> I've actually uh, played this one a little bit more. Oh, oh I got that. Oh, I almost had him. Woohoo! <laughs> so first to five wins the game. So it's just a nice little, like, just mindless kill some stuff without having to worry about like little balls exploding that. Um, this is a Hollywood game. Uh, the developer uh, who wrote this game contacted me and uh, had really wanted to be in the nomination process. So since he wasn't able to be nominated, he didn't make the nomination, I thought I'd show some of his work. Uh, he's a German developer. He's done a lot of work with Hollywood. Um, one of his other projects is American National Parks. You may or may not have seen this. Um, uh, unfortunately, the game is in German, 
but I, I think it's done by uh, Kiho Software. Uh, Occam Curran is his name. So uh, hopefully for next year's developer award, Occam, we'll get you in the list. We'll we'll try to make sure that happens. Um, the uh, I, the graphics might be a little bit sketchy if you work at Paramount. That's okay. And the music too. Um, little mixed themes here. So uh, I click into the game, and again it's in German, and it looks like a resource management, uh, much like um, Ports of Call. If you're familiar with Ports of Call, is a game. And honestly, I don't know too much what to do. Um, you can right-click and turn the uh, pointer, and if you click on this guy, the German text down here changes, and then you can click on the German text and it changes again. But I can't really <laughs> read it, so I don't really know what I'm doing. And then if you uh, click this button, oh, I think I'm talking to the president guy here. Is he actually talking? Oh, he's saying stuff. Cool. Is that Greek or German? I thought it was German. There's an Verdenschutzen is German, right? <laughs> so my language skills are uh, not the best here. So, um, I don't think so, but that would be nice. So at some point I can get, oh, I got something. Sweet. I wonder what that does. Oh, there you go. Now we can transition to the page that has the uh, transmit button on it. And you can tell it's a Hollywood app because the transition between the pages changes and he just randomizes the Hollywood functions, which is kind of fun. So apparently I can uh, press the buttons, but I don't know which ones to press. <laughs> but we can go back and uh, this will change. So. Um, I haven't learned how the game actually plays, but I want to appreciate his work as he continues to create content for the Amiga, which is what we need. So if you're a German speaker, maybe you should spend some time, or maybe if you want to learn German, this would be a good impetus to do it. So I wanted to show his uh, Hollywood title here. Uh, and the graphics are kind of fun. Have you answered it? I'd much rather have him work on a PowerPC accelerator for classic Amigas than play games. He's not allowed to play games. Um, so that brings us to the last title that I wanted to show, which is Mace. Um, Mace is a game that was released, I think, about two months ago, maybe a month ago. Uh, again, new Amiga title. Uh, Endwicker um, are the uh, developers. And what's amazing about their work is that you can get this for Android devices, Windows devices, uh, and they also make a commercial version for the Amiga. I'm sure there's no reason to do a commercial version for an Amiga other than because they want to. So, uh, big big thanks to them for creating the game. Um, it does have a one and two player mode, and both these joysticks work, so you can actually play with the classic Amiga joystick or you can use the new one. Uh, but I'll put it in uh, easy mode with one player. And it's a, it's a pretty much standard shoot 'em up, but the graphics are phenomenal. They've done a great job um, with the backgrounds and the parallax scrolling. And I press the button and I can blow stuff up and pick up power ups. Um, it's got, I think, three different zones, and each zone has an end boss. Um, it was for sale here at the show uh, for $25. I bought my copy. And this is the demo you can download for free. And again, it runs on more than just uh, Amigo S. My first purchase was for my Android tablet, where it runs great. And then uh, I wanted to support the Amiga, so I bought the Amiga version. And as you destroy the bad guys, you get little power-ups. Uh, the rocks seem to have the most. And then the power-ups uh, juice your guns and give you health and give you bombs. Uh, there's a bomb on the second button there. You can see it destroys everything in its path. And at the top, there's a little bar that gives you your status for your health and here's the number of bombs you have available. I would like to get some more power up. But anyway, it's a nice little game. It's a, it's a platform shoot 'em up. And uh, the graphics are fantastic, like all of their games. Swamp Defense, we've had Tap Tool is another one of their commercial games that's available. So they're, they're really doing a great job writing new content without 3D drivers. Um, I think all these data files are actually PNG. Uh, so they're, they're using very standard graphics and formats and some really good programming techniques to get the performance up. Uh, Steven Sully has this running on his X1000 if you want to see uh, uh, how fast it can go. Um, 
on that machine, it's, uh, it's even smoother than it is here. Um, and the, th the other thing I love about this game is that um, if you look in the manual that they have, the printed manual that comes with it, it actually lists the Mega 4000 with the PowerPC as a uh, supported system, and they have a specific configuration to use that turns down some of the graphics features like the lens flares and whatnot. Um, uh, this turns down some of the certain features that uh, so you can play it even on your classic system. So I'm going to install this on the 4000 in the back corner so that you can uh, try it out on that machine. And I'll plug in the uh, classic Amiga joystick there so you get to try. But anyway, this concludes the uh, game's presentation. Uh, what's exciting about this here is the fact that of the titles I showed, um, Mace and uh, Huensen uh, are both uh, commercial titles. So there's still people producing commercial games. Highly recommended to do that. You're probably not going to make enough money to uh, buy a car, but you might be able to buy your uh, significant other a nice dinner <laughs> with the money that you make from your Amiga work. So uh, thank you very much for your attention.